that means that, okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Sheffield Library's online children's activity. I'm absolutely delighted to introduce local Sheffield author Susie Senior this morning, who's done lots of work for us in our libraries in the past, and the events have always been fabulous. So um, today she's going to be introducing her new book to you. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Susie in a moment. Um, because this is a webinar, anything that you need to tell us or ask us, there's a chat facility just at the bottom of the screen and I'll be monitoring that. I'm going to disappear for uh, the duration of the event and let Susie take over, but, but I, I will be looking at the chat to facility. So please do say hello to us. We, we'd like to know who's with us this morning. Okay, so I'm going to disappear and I'm going to hand you over to Susie. So have a wonderful time. I am sure that you will. Thank you over so much. You, uh, thank you. Good morning. It's really lovely to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, delighted to be able to do this. As Tina said, if you'd like to say hello in the chat, it'd be lovely to hear from you. Let us know. Obviously, no personal details because it's a, a public webinar, but let us know where you are, whether you've got pirate fancy dress on or if it's just me, um, that would be lovely. I've got a couple of books to read to you this morning and we've also got some um, some activities and things to do as well. Oh, fabulous. Hello, everybody. That's wonderful. Brilliant to see you. Now, you might have come across Octopants before. If you haven't, this will be new to you, but this is Octopants. And also we have the new book, Octopants and the Missing Pirate Pants. I figured it made sense to read both to you today. Oh, good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you in the chat. First of all, I thought maybe I could tell you how I came to write Octopants because it's quite fun. And when my daughter was little, she had a squeezy bath toy that was an octopus and it looked a bit like this. This isn't the same one because as many any grown-ups will know bath toys get full of black slime and they're not really good for pulling out years later but this is a little bit like it and this octopus bath toy had a song we used to sing for it and this song used to go like this I am an octopus I've got no underwear I am an octopus I've got no underwear it wasn't a very imaginative song but it was fun now, when this is a little bit different because we're on a webinar, but when I'm in a library or when I'm in a school, one of the things we like to do is sing that song and wave our tentacles. So if you'd like to, doesn't matter if you don't, shall we have a practice waving tentacles? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Right then. So arm tentacles. I can't do this because suddenly you won't be able to see me, but leg tentacles as well. Give them a wave. And then if you're up for it, sing along with me. I am an octopus, I've got no underwear. I am an octopus, I've got no underwear. Fabulous, well done, thank you very much. Excellent tentacle waving. And so we thought, how sad would that be if you were an octopus? And how many, how many legs does an octopus have? Eight? So with eight legs, it's quite hard to find pants to fit. And what a sad situation that would be. And so we thought, that sounds a bit like a story. You've got two of the main ingredients. You've got a character, ta-da. You've got a problem, no pants. Where do we go from there? So we had a good think about it. And my daughter kept telling me I got it wrong. And so we wrote it quite a few times until eventually we had a story. And eventually Little Tiger Press decided to publish it. And they found this amazing illustrator, Claire Powell, who was really fabulous and really, really good at drawing octopuses. So this is Octopants. What I'm trying to try and do so that you get a better view of all the pictures and Claire's gorgeous artwork is I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you. So, won't be a moment. Let's see. This should just work in a moment. Okay. Hopefully you should be able to see a screen with a picture of octopants on it now. Yeah, Susie, gonna... that's lovely. We can I can see that. Yeah. Marvelous. Thank you very much indeed. So here we are. 
First off, before I start the story, you just have to see these beautiful end papers that are at the start of the book. This is Claire's fish going off somewhere. Who knows where? Maybe we'll find out later. Hello there. I'm an octopus. There's something you should know. I don't have any underpants. I've nothing on below. I've tried to buy some octopants. I've tried all over town, but everyone just laughed and laughed and answered with a frown. Underpants for you, they said. Oh no, we don't have any. The problem seems to be your legs. You've just got six too many. I've even tried to shop online. I tried to surf the net. I found a cod, three tuna, and my credit card got wet. I still could not find Dr. Pants. It almost made me cry. There's pants out there for everyone, except for octopi. But then one day, I found a place I hadn't seen before. A seahorse hovered just inside the huge revolving door. Good morning, can I help you, sir? Why don't you step inside? My undersea emporium is famous ocean wide. I've got bobble hats for barnacles and evening wear for eels. Ones used just for urchins and slipper socks for seals. Jewelry for jellyfish and water wings for whales and rainbow paint for rainbow trout to brighten up their scales. Yes, I've got clothes for everyone with spots and stripes and rockets, pirate ships and sparkly bits and lots of handy pockets. Now underwear for you, sir. I think you've been misled. Perhaps you don't need octopants, but something else instead. And then I saw the problem. I'd looked at this all wrong. These legs weren't legs. These legs were arms and they have been all along. Hello there, I'm an octopus. By now, you might have guessed. I'm still not wearing underpants. I bought an octo vest. I absolutely love this spread. I love his happy, happy little face. And we'll get to draw some happy little faces later. Um, but yeah, so that's octopants. Now, one of the things we love doing with octopants, and I know lots of people have told me the same when I've met people in libraries and bookshops and schools, is choosing our favorite things from Claire's fantastic spreads. And so everybody at home, would you like to choose your favorite outfit from this spread? It doesn't need to be a whole outfit. What would you buy if you were in the undersea emporium? So have a good look. You can tell us in the chat. You can tell your families or your friends at home. Let us know what you think. My favorite is the camouflage skirt. I have actually got a skirt like that. So I was quite impressed when I saw that was in Claire's illustrations. So yes, have a good look, see what you like best. I'm just gonna pop the chat back on so I can see your answers. Oh, the green dress with the pink lining. That is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I like that one too. I quite like those big boots with the um, green flashes on as well. I think they'd look quite smart with the um, camouflage skirt. Isn't there are lots of nice outfits up there, aren't there, Susie? There are, aren't they? Ooh, green dress, like black hat. Yeah, very nice. That would look fantastic. Yeah. I like the sombrero. Yes, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Really I think Claire good. probably had a lovely time illustrating this lot. Oh, the pirate top. That one is fabulous, isn't it? I love that too. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably wear that. Brilliant. That's just at the top looks interesting. The white one with the flowers on and then it's got like um, a blue edging and ooh, ooh. that could be really sparkly, I bet. That is lovely, isn't it? Mm. I, I love the way you've got those edges of things coming through and you see things in the illustrations and then each time you look, you find something else that's exciting as well, or just things that are just right. poking in. Oh, blue and white spotty bow. Where's that one? Oh yeah, I see that, that's lovely. Yeah, some fantastic things. Okay. Oh, the bear jumper. Ooh. Didn't see the bear jumper. Where's that 
Sorry, you've got me peering at my screen now. I'm just looking for that one as well, Susan. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a lot of spotting things in this session. There is, this is probably there? very good practice for us. Mm, someone's mentioned the pineapple glasses as well, I think. Oh, the pineapple glasses are fabulous, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've just spotted those, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Lovely. I'm quite liking that pink spotty rah rah skirt as well. Mm, that's like one of that. my favourites, I think. I remember those from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Wonderful. Right then. Okay. If everybody's told us the ones they like best, let's move on to the next thing. Okay. Next favourite thing to spot is, and again, people tell me they love doing this. Can you find your favourite fish? It might be your favourite sea creature. It might be that they've got the best pants on. Whichever one you think is best, just let us know in the chat. Um, click too soon. The angelfish are very sweet, aren't they? I, I, I quite like yeah. those. They are very lovely. I quite like um that big um, long fish with the pink and the yellow, is it, I don't know, it's a pipe fish or something like that, with the fabulous Christmassy long johns on. I think he's really, really gorgeous. It looks like, um, you know, those um, fruit salad sweets, it's the same colour scheme, I like that. Oh, the sea turtle and the stingray, absolutely. They're gorgeous, aren't they? Oh yeah, you like the long one of the stripy pants as well. Yes, love it. Yeah, the stingray's gorgeous. We'll see tomorrow turtle soon as well. Oh, and the octopus and the turtle. A puffer fish, yep. Oh, the black horn, is that the? Yes, that black one on the left-hand side that looks really grumpy. I like that one too. <laughs> I, just, I just spotted the puffer fish, he's really sweet, isn't he? He is adorable, isn't he? I love puffer fish. Yeah. Oh, and the green one at the bottom with the lipstick and the pink pants with the bow. Oh yeah, I see that one. Again, every time I look at this, I see more fish that I hadn't really spotted before. There's just so much to look at. Fabulous. Yeah. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> Brilliant. Now, I asked the illustrator Claire which was her favourite fish. And she said, you can't see it on here, but she said that her favourite is, let's see if I can click onto the next one. There he is, the grey fish with the pineapple glasses that he's bought. And this is, um, this is the, the other end paper at the end of the book. So at the start of the book, you've got all the fish going off to the shops together. We didn't know where they were going at that point. And at that, you've got them all coming back with the gorgeous little shopping bags. And the other thing I love here is you get a really good view of puffer fish in his pants. And puffer fish is one of my favourites. And so that's when we decided, when we looked at a sequel to Octopants, I decided that puffer fish should probably get a bit of a starring role. So the next story we've got to read you is Puffer Fish's story. Okay, I'm just gonna come out and stop sharing my screen for the moment, I think. Oh, no, here is Octopants and the Missing Pirate Pants. Okay. So here is the next book, Octopants and the Missing Pirate Pants. Again, it's illustrated by Claire Powell, as you can tell. Here is her beautiful end papers. And so you can see the illustrations. Hello, come in and welcome to our world beneath the sea. Meet Pufferfish and Turtle too, and Octopants, that's me. I once tried finding, finding pants my shape and didn't have much luck, but someone called me Octopants and well, the name just stuck. But puffer fish wears underpants, he's always got some on. Though just last week, disaster struck. His pirate pants were gone. Come on, I said to cheer him up. Let's go and track them down. So off we went with lots of snacks and searched all over town. I love that with his little lunchbox. 
We looked in lobster's laundry. And we checked in mermaid's hair. We checked in muscle fitness club, but the pants were just not there. We're out of looks on puffer fish, puffer fish. Oh, what a pointless trek. Hey, wait, I said, we can't give up. Let's go and search the wreck. The shipwreck, yikes, yelled puffer fish. This creepy turtle cried. I hope your rundies aren't in there. We bravely peered inside. But then we heard a booming voice. Ahoy, come up, me hearties. You're just in time to join the fun. Us pirates love our parties. And there they were, a pirate crew in pants all shapes and sizes. Pants with anchors, pants with bows, and pants for cool disguises. Rainbow pants and disco pants and pants to make you tougher. This pirate pants were everywhere, but still no pants for puffer. You've lost your pants, the pirates cried. I wonder where they are. Don't worry, lad, they'll soon turn up. They can't have gone too far. Just then a shadow crossed the deck. It all went cold and dark. We saw a flash of giant teeth and Turtle shouted. She's after us, yelled Pufferfish. We've got to get away. We dodged past ropes and cannonballs, but then the shark called, hey, I'd like to join your pirate crew. I've got a hat, she said. Then Pufferfish began to laugh. My pants are on your head. Your pants? The shark looked quite surprised. I found them in the kelp. Here, have them back. And Puffer smiled. Hey, thanks for all your help. Hooray for pirate pants, we cheered. Let's celebrate. And so we joined the pirates back on board to party. Yo, ho, ho. So Pufferfish got his pants back. And here are, the, again, beautiful end papers with all the crew going back from the party with the balloons and the party hats, bless them. Isn't that fabulous? So that's Octopants and the Missing Pirate Pants, published by Little Tiger Press. Now, I've got a spread. I'm just going to share my screen again so you can see this. Because there's another spread that's brilliant for spotting things in. Oh, not that one. Give me a moment. I'm just going to find the right picture for you. Here it is. Okay. Sorry, won't be a moment. <laughs> so in a moment, we've got the pants with anchors, pants with bows and pants for cool disguises. And I figured you might like to have a look for those in this spread. Okay, right. Here we go. Sorry for the delay. In a moment, you should be able to see a nice big picture of this spread. There you go, fantastic. Right, so here they are, a pirate crew in pants all shapes and sizes. Can you find the pants with anchors? Let us know in the chat when you found them. I can see them, but it took me a little while of practicing. And there's so much to look at there. All the party paraphernalia and all the pants. Really lovely. So yeah, let us know if you spot the pants with anchors. Yes, indeed, crab's pants, well spotted. 
And can anybody see the pants with bows? I really like these ones. I think it's a fabulous outfit. Yep, fantastic. Yes, absolutely brilliant, well spotted. So we found the crabs, uh, sorry, we found the crabs pants with anchors on. We found the bows. Can anybody see? Now this one was a little bit tricky. We've got pants for cool disguises and I had no idea how Claire, how Claire would do this, how she would manage to illustrate this. But what she's done is there's pants disguised as something else. So can anybody spot the pants disguised as something else? Have a good look, it's a wee bit tricky. And let us know in the chat if you find them. This is a hard one, isn't it? So it I, is. It took me I've ages. Not spotted them yet? When the first books came, when the when the um when the book's nearly ready to go to print, the publisher always sends the proofs through, and then you have to go through them and just check everything's right with them before they press the button and print a, a huge number of them. So it's always a, bit, a little bit a little bit tense in case you miss anything important. It, it does happen sometimes. Um, but when they first came through, we were looking for these pants with cool disguises, and it just took us ages. Oh, I think we did find them eventually. It, haven't they? <laughs> we think you found it. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I think Amelia's saying Ooh, she found it. The bunting, actually, yeah, that's a good point. The pants, there are pants disguised as bunting, aren't they? Those aren't, aren't the ones I was looking for, but, but those are indeed. It's not the captain's trousers. It's somebody to the other side of the spread. It's quite subtle. Ah, Amelia thinks thinks they've found it. Yes, Walrus's pants. Yes, these his pants are basically disguised as the ship. I love the way she's kind of put the little um the little boards like the decking all the way along his pants. Well spotted, Amelia. Excellent. All right then, so that's that spread. And um, let's see what's next. Be a tick. Ooh, yes, so that's fantastic. We've done the spotting. You pitch your favorite fish, you pitch your favorite pants, you found the pants. Now we've got a craft activity to do. So this is, my puffer fish is not quite finished yet, but what I thought it might be nice to do is make a happy and sad puffer fish. So I will stop screen sharing just for the moment, but I'll bring these pictures back afterwards, back up afterwards because you will need to see them. So here we are. Fantastic, right. Well, I was thinking about what we could do and trying to think what was easy to do on screen and to make at home. And I thought, puffer fishes. So here is puffer fish, very, very sad. That he's lost his pants. He's got no pants on at the moment, but we're gonna fix that. And here is puffer fish, delighted to have found his pants. So right then, I think if you haven't got this stuff at home, don't worry, you can always do it another time. Um, but I'll show you how to do it now anyway. And if anybody has got the things at home, then you can join in. I'll do it slowly so that you don't get left behind. Right then. So first you need a piece of paper. It doesn't need to be coloured paper. I've got yellow, but if you've got white, you can colour it in whenever you like. So it's not a problem. What we're going to do is get your piece of paper and fold it up in half. It's a little bit like making snowflakes, if anyone's made snowflakes from paper, paper, from paper before. My words in a tangle. So that's folded in half. I'll take you a moment to do that. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. Like that. And then I'm going to hold it at the pointy end where it's all folded up and just one more time, fold it over again. So it looks like a long cone. I'm going to hold it by the pointy bit so that it doesn't fall apart when we start cutting. And then if I can find my pencil, there it is. If you've got that shape now, what I'm going to do is make it ice creamish cone shaped. So I'm going to draw a line from that corner 
like that so that we know where we're cutting. So it's going to look like that. If anybody gets left behind or you need to me to explain anything better, just give me a shout in the chat and we'll fix it. So once you've drawn your line there, I'm going to draw a zigzag along the inside of it, or some spikes anyway. I'm going to start at the corner. Oh. I'll show you in a moment. I'm just going to draw a zigzag under underneath your curvy line. Like that. Once we've done that, I'm going to cut it out with a pair of scissors. So I'm going to ignore the curvy line and just cut out the zigzag bit like this. If it goes wrong, you can always do another one if you've got enough paper. Might look a little bit of the sun when I finish cutting this out with it being so bright yellow, but we will turn it into a puffer fish. So hopefully, I've finished cutting and unfolding it, we should have a big round puffer fish shape. It does indeed look a bit like the sun. We could do with a bit of that today, couldn't we, in Sheffield? It's a bit, a bit rainy and damp out there, a bit grey. So there is puffer fish. It will be puffer fish eventually. What we need next is some little fins. So you can see a picture of puffer fish. There he is, there's Puffy Fish. He's got his little spiky body and he's got little fins that poke out the sides as well. So with the rest of my paper, I'm gonna draw a fin. Doesn't need to be brilliant, it's just that kind of shape. Kind of like a rectangle, but more squashed at one end. And I'm gonna cut those out as well. I'm just cutting out two pieces of paper at once, but you could do um, you could cut them out separately. There we go. So I've got a puffer fish. And I've got two little fins. All I need now is some sticky tape. There it is. Everyone doing okay? Give us a shout in the chat if you get stuck on anything, or if you need to ask anything. I'm going to get a couple of bits of sticky tape. Stick his fins on. Where did it go? Out there, do you reckon? you know I'm not an illustrator but thankfully I've got Claire's pictures to copy off so we'll see how he turns out. That's all like Claire does that I do love cutting and sticking. So that is my little puffer fish, his little fins but now he needs a face and space for his pants as well so I can't do his face too low down. So on this one I've got happy face on one side so I'm just going to go into the screen share and then we can see the faces so that you can copy them if you would like to. You can do your own happy and sad faces. That's not a problem. But I copied Claire's because I think she's better at it than me. Right then, so let's go share the screen. And here they are. Hopefully now you should be able to see two puffer fishes and a pair of pants. Okay, now I need to leave. If you can still see me in the, the little screen. We need to leave. The bottom bit free to draw pants onto. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just draw a face on him. So on one side, I'm going to draw his happy face. Right then, I've got a big black pen for this. So a big black felt tape or a black crayon or something works really, really well. 
Okay, you're not too far down, so I've got to fit his pants on. I love puffer fish, he's such a cutie. I've got his eyes. Sorry, you probably hear my pen squeaking from there. He's got surprised eyebrows. He's happy with the mouth. I'm going to colour that in. You're hard and concentrated, can't you? <laughs> Nearly done. Hope yours are going okay. You've got some fantastic puffer fishes on the go there. Okay, right then. Here is my happy puffer, puffer fish. I do struggle to say his name sometimes. There's his happy face. I'm going to do the sad face on the other side. He's got sad eyebrows this time. I love the way the illustrators managed to put across all that emotion and all those fantastic expressions just with a few lines. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, bless him. This sad puffer fish. Now what I'm going to do is draw on the pants. So in the pictures there, you can see that he's got his, um, his spare pants on that he put on when he'd lost his pirate pants, his red and white ones. So I'm going to draw those on the sad side. Ah, now I've got a problem. I was going to draw them on, but they're white and I haven't got a white pen. So this time I'm going to draw around. It's fine if you've got a piece of white paper, you can just draw it on and colour him in afterwards. But I'm going to draw around a piece of white paper, making some pants. So I'm just going to pop puffer fish on a piece of white paper, like that, and draw around him and cut out some pant shapes. Don't need to cut out the prickles, I don't think. They can just poke through. If you're drawing them on, you've got a much easier job there. Let's see. I don't have a face with them either. That's tricky. There we go. They look like they fit. They do just about, don't they? So I need a red line around the top. And the red bit down the middle as well. I'm going to colour that in now with my big chunky crayons. When I thought about what job I was going to do when I grow up, I never realised that I would get to end up writing stories and drawing pants. I'm very pleased. <laughs> I didn't know I could be a writer. I thought other people were writers. And then it turned out it just took an awful lot of practice and quite a lot, long time, long time sending books off to publishers. But it's a brilliant job getting to dress up as a pirate and draw pants is just really, really fun. And to meet loads of people. Susie, can I ask, did you enjoy reading as a child? I did, do think, yes. Do you think reading books inspired you to become an author yourself? Definitely. I think it really did because I, I loved reading books as a child. And then when I had my own children, I really love picture books. There's something really mm. magic about the way the words and the pictures work together yeah, that I just true. really loved. And I think even now, my children are older now and we still buy picture books sometimes. I think we all know they're for me, but I still read them to my 11 <laughs> year old anyway, you know, because it's just yeah. a, a comforting thing to do. You know, if somebody's not it's feeling lovely, too yeah. well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice brilliant. thing to do, isn't it? Read together. Absolutely. And the more you read as well, the better you get at lots of other things as well. Um, and reading makes you really better at writing. It even makes you better at maths, I understand, from some research that was done. So. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just really fun. We like um, we like oi frog. 
Um, and the, yeah, the iFrog and iCat series, they're absolutely hilarious. I love those. When we read those, I think you can hear me laughing all the way up the street. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I did love reading as a child and my, my mum reads a lot as well. So I think that that made a difference because I kind of got that example from her as well. But part of it's finding things you like to read, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. Whether that's big chunky books or whether it's graphic novels or comics or in my case, picture books. It's whatever, whatever yeah. gets you excited about reading. Ta-da! We have pants. Sorry, that took a little while. So there's his um sad pants or spare pants as we call them and now we've got some pirate pants to make as well so we can either color those in black or cut them out i think i might uh, have i got black paper there's a question no but i've got black crayons so we're going to be coloring those ones in so i'm going to stick those on with a sticky tape How's it going? Is anybody else out there? I'm just going to put the chat on so I can see you. Has anybody else got their puffer fish looking good so far? I'm sure there's lots of wonderful puffer fish out there, Susie. There are. And we'd love to see them as well. We would indeed. So if anyone would like to take a picture of their puffer fish and send it in to us, I will give you the email address that you can do that, uh, that you can send them to um, before the end of the, um, the activity. Oh, that would be amazing. We'd love yeah, to see, we'd love to see them. Because you could just design any pair of pants for your puffer fish, couldn't you, Susie? You don't you have could to indeed. Do the ones that are in the picture. Absolutely. Um, you could design several pairs for him so that he's got a different pair every day. You could indeed. That would be brilliant. Now, the other thing you could do, if you want more ideas for later on in the day, once we've gone, is you could design outfits for different sea creatures. So you could pick your own sea creatures. It might be a walrus. It might be a jellyfish. It might be anything, really. And then you could pick your own outfits to go with them. We quite like doing it with alliteration. So things that started with the same letters, like the water wings for whales and the jewellery for jellyfish. We could have wellingtons for whelks. I'm not sure how you draw a whelk, but hey, there's a challenge. Um, so, yeah, there's all sorts of things you could you could go on to do from it. Really, really good fun. Um, right, black crayon, pirate pants. Here we go. That black? Yes. Oh, this is a challenge. I've not drawn these pirate pants before. Mm. Red as well, haven't they? Fantastic. Okay, red pirate pants. I think when Claire does the illustration, she does a lot of these um, digitally. So she does a drawing actually on the computer, which is quite exciting. Some of her other books, she um, she kind of draws them all by hand, but she does a lot, a lot on the computer with this. That was something um, we've sort of discovered um, last summer because we had a few other um, author events, Susie. Yeah. And um, we uh, we were quite surprised to find that you know people do draw them onto the the iPad. Um, absolutely is, yeah yeah it's amazing isn't it and what fantastic yeah. programs they've got that make it all that's right yeah all come yes. together it's a yeah, that, we just thought you know they'd sit down with some pens and a pad but that's not always the case i mean there are oh, people as you've said who do still do that but a lot of it is yeah. um it's done on the so, computer yeah so many fantastic different ways people work we saw um wow. Johnny Lambert, who writes fantastic picture books and does um, paper craft, we saw him doing his stuff once, and he rips up bits of paper to make his pictures with. It's amazing. Gosh. Yeah. Um, so there's awful lots of fantastic ways to do illustration. It doesn't, as you say, Tina, it doesn't need to be just by getting your, your pens and your paper out. It's whatever different styles work for different people and experimenting that's, with different that's things. True. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, and this is how we have a wealth of fabulous picture books <laughs> to read, isn't it? Is. Marvelous, isn't it? So exciting. What fabulous books we've got out there. Um, I am nearly finished colouring in pirate pants here. It is happening. I might just get it finished by the time we've got to go. Obviously everyone else at home can, can carry on. Hey, I could carry on, couldn't I, once we've gone? There's nothing to stop me. Nearly there. I'm so relieved I've got this the right way around and done the right pants on the right face. 
here he is. Oh, I've forgotten to do the skull and crossbones. I knew there was something missing. Never mind, I can fix this. White paper. Can't believe I drew pirate pants and forgot to do it with skull and crossbones. Dear me. This is why I do the words. I hope everybody has a lovely half term this week. I bet there's lots more stories and gluing and sticking and all sorts happening this week in Sheffield for half term. Nearly done, just cutting some bones out. I was thinking once these cuttlefish are done, you can even hang them up so that they spin round so you get to see his happy face and his sad face as it spins. I didn't tell everyone to bring string because I only thought of it afterwards. I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. Right, my skull and crossbones done. Skull and crossbones done. Just going to glue it on, stick it on with a bit of tape. Fantastic. I think I'm done. So I've got a happy puff of fish. No, a sad puff of fish. And a happy puff of fish. Hooray! Brilliant, Susie. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I've done one as well, so I'll, I'll show you mine. Have oh, fabulous. Look. Thank you. Right, right. shall I stop it's nowhere, Yeah, it's, it's stop nowhere near as good as yours. Oh, but it's brilliant. Have a look. So I'll show you mine. I'll pop it first back on gallery view. Yeah, so um, that's oh, my puffer fish. It's gorgeous. Puff of fish, and then happy puffer fish. Absolutely fabulous. I love those pants designs. Brilliant. <laughs> so thank you so much, Susie. That's been absolutely fantastic. I've really enjoyed it and I've giggled away at the stories as well. So hope everyone else has had a lovely time. All of Susie's books are available to borrow from your local library. So if you'd like to read them for yourself, nip along there and they'll be able to um, sort you out with uh, a copy of Octopants and Octopants and the Missing Pirate Pants. Don't forget, we would love to see your puffer fish creations. So if you would like to share them with us on social media, if you just take a photo of them and then email them to libraries at sheffield.gov.uk and then we'll pop them on our social media and I'll send them on to Susie as well for her to look at. Oh, amazing. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much for joining us. We've had a lovely time. Um, this video, if you wanted to watch it again, is going to be available on our YouTube uh, channel. And before you go, I just want to tell you about another uh, online activity that we're hosting uh, tomorrow. Two while wow, three details are on, are on Eventbrite and we'll have the author Salma Zaman and she's going to be talking about her book, Sally and her super snot. So that sounds fun. fun. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thank you once again, Susie. It's been lovely to see you again. And hopefully a bit later on in the year, we might be able to host some events in our libraries with you. OK, lovely. so take care, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Bye.